Uh, I like the question. Um, and let's see how I answer it. So this has come up recently with one of our most recent engagements and the developers kind of on that team uh, challenged us to like, why are we not using CDK for some of the stuff? Let's be like, let's be totally honest that like CDK is pretty new and we've been doing this for a long time. So uh, our natural bias is going to be that we want to use um, uh, Terraform because it's just a richer experience. But there's a lot of other reasons why I think one can argue for using it something like Terraform and not something that's more Turing complete uh, like CDK or Pulumi. And that's that requirements don't always translate to awesome uh, outcomes or products. And the problem is that when you can do everything, anything possible, every way possible, you get into this scenario of why people hate Jenkins and why people hate uh, like groovy pipelines in Jenkins. Uh, because you develop these things that uh, start off quite simple, quite elegant, that do all these things you need, and then 25 people work on it and it becomes a mush of pipeline code, a mush of infrastructure code if we're talking the CDK route and things like that. This is not saying you can't use it. I'm thinking more like there's a time and place for it. So. If we talk about Amazon and the Amazon ecosystem, um, an example I like to bring up is ECS. ECS has been po wildly popular as a quick way to get up and running with containers in a reliable way that's fully integrated with AWS services. But it's been a colossal failure when you look at reusable code across organizations. Uh, and this is where Kubernetes just kicks butt over uh, ECS. So in Kubernetes, they quickly Helm became the dominant package manager in this ecosystem. And yeah, there's been a lot of you know hatred towards Helm for some security things or whatnot, but it's been incredibly successful because now there are literally hundreds and hundreds of Helm charts, many written by the the developers of these things. Um, to, to release and deploy their software. The reason why I bring up Helm and Kubernetes is that's provided, proved to be a very effective ecosystem. If we talk about Docker, same thing, incredibly productive ecosystem. And, uh, you know, so with Docker Hub, there's this registry and, you know, security implications aside, there's a container for everything. People put them out there, your mileage may vary and some may be exploitable. But it, that's, the, that's part of the secret why Docker has been so successful. It's easy DSL, easy distribution platform, and works everywhere. The same pattern like going back in the days to Ruby gems and then, you know, uh, Python modules and all these things. It's a very effective pattern. Then we go to Amazon and we have ECS and there's none of that. So we get all these snowflake infrastructures built in every organization to spec. And then every company, every time you come into a new company, at least as us, as, develop, as contractors, you know, no two environments look the same. They're using the same tool, tool stack, but there's too many degrees of variation. And I don't like that. So this is where I think that the six, part of the success of Terraform has been that the language isn't that powerful and that you are constrained in some of these things. And then the, the concept of modules is that registry component, which allows for great and tremendous reusability across organizations. And that's what I'm all for. And that's like our whole mission statement at Cloud Posse is to build reusable infrastructure across organizations that's consistent and reliable. So back to your CDK question. And the answer that I gave the customer was this. Let's do this. Let's continue to roll out Terraform for all the foundational infrastructure, the stuff that doesn't change that much the stuff that's highly, highly reusable across organizations. And then let's consider your developers to use CDK for the end, for, for, for like the last layer of your infrastructure. What I'm talking about there, and I'm not sure at what point you joined, but in the very beginning of the call, I talked about what I always talk about, which are the four layers of infrastructure. Basically, layer one, layer two, layer three. Four, layer one is foundational infrastructure. Layer two is your platform. Layer three are your shared services. Layer four are your applications. Your applications, go for it. Go nuts. Use CDK, use CloudFormation, you know, uh, use serverless framework. Like if somebody's using the serverless framework, which is purpose built for doing lambdas and uh, you know, providing the structure of a Rails, but for lambdas, 
uh, use it. I'm not gonna say, because we use Terraform in this company, you're not gonna be able to use serverless. That's not the right answer. Um, so the answer is it's gonna depend on what you, at where, at where you're operating.